He is the answer. You won't go under. Searching and waiting for a door to open, you won't go under. Circumstances look like it's about to choke you out, you won't go under. Father, I thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding, that guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. We won't go under. Why? Because you don't want to call us out to work in the earth. And your Bible says that he who began a good work is faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And his word cannot return to it void. It must accomplish what it was sent out. You won't go under. You won't go under. Father, thank you for your peace today. Thank you for your power today. Thank you that you are with us. You are our firm foundation. And because you're our foundation, we can't go under. We trust you, Lord, to do all that we can do today. Speak loud and clear. In Jesus' name, all those who agree and believe say amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just flow today. Let's just flow today. Before we get into the for me real quick, and neighbor, hug. Hey, you're not going under. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Again, a good work is faithful. I feel hope rising in the room today. He who began a good work, he, if he started it, that means he has to finish it. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God is the most constant and consistent person I know. There's never a day that I have to worry about switching up on me. He's consistent. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. Again, this isn't my sermon. I, I, just, I just feel a, a, a sense of we just got to be reminded of who he is. Oftentimes, my circumstance tries to determine and dictate who I believe that he is. Instead of understanding who he is, to dictate my circumstance. He's still God. He's still God. He still does miracles. He still does signs and wonders. I'm not telling you something I just heard in the story in the Bible. I'm telling you something I've experienced. A couple months ago, I preached at this church, and we prayed for this child, this infant, who could not see. While Jamaica was exhorting, I get a text from the pastor while we're worshiping. The baby can see now. Y'all, y'all, I, I talked to this crowd right here. You didn't hear what I said. He can still see now. He's still doing miracles. Under. So if he can do it in Abbeville, South Carolina, I just, I just talked to this crowd. I just talked to y'all today. We didn't come to have church today. Whatever you need is in the room. Why? Because he's in the room. Whew. Ready? Here he is. Ready or not? It's that type of day today. I need you to believe with me. It's that type of day today. What do you need from the Lord today? He's coming to answer the need. He's coming to answer the need. He's coming to answer the need. The truth is, he's already answered it. You're just catching up. It's that type of day today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry. I need that brunch to catch you. Let's go to brunch. Whatever you need from the Lord, whatever you need, whatever you need, have your way, Holy Ghost. Way, Holy Ghost. Have your way. 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 Have your favor. I, I, I worry about the sermon right now. We'll get to the sermon. Can y'all point your hands to your pastor real quick? That's your pastor. Point your hands to your pastor.
point your hands to your pastor. You will never know. Point your hands to your pastor and his wife right now. The seats that they sit in, if some of you sat in those seats, they'll kill you. Oftentimes, people have things to say about people at the top, whether it be in corporate America, whether it be in churches, schools, they you have no idea the weight of that seat. Point your hands, and as you point your hands, we're, we're praying strength into your, your leaders right now. Strength into your leaders right now. I need y'all to pray today. Strength into your leaders right now. Whew. Every seed that has is not wasted. Time and hours is not wasted. Ministry, the demise of your family. Everything that God has called you to build would not destroy. I need y'all to pray. This thing will not take you out. You are not going under. Not going under. You are not going under. You are not going under. Pray, pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Strengthen your mind today. Strengthen your heart today. You are equipped. You are called. You are chosen. You are equipped. You are called. You are chosen. Before the foundation of the earth, I chose you and I formed you in your mother's womb. I knew you and I set you apart. Called you of everything considered. Called you both of everything considered. This will not take you out. This will not bring a divide. But Father, I, I, I speak a hedge of protection over your children right now in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper. No weapon against the Greer household shall be able to prosper. They are blessed. Woo! Never mind. They are blessed and highly favored. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Lord, their steps are ordered by you. Everywhere they put their foot, they have dominion and authority right now in the name of Jesus. Father, their children's children are blessed right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that their home is blessed. Their finances are blessed. Their marriage is blessed. Their minds are blessed. Their bodies are blessed. And every need that they have, you've already provided it. That and more. Super abundantly. In the name of Jesus. Peace is their portion. Joy 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 is their portion. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's just a part of the book. You need this chapter. You need this chapter. You need this chapter. How would they know if, if, if you don't walk through it first? Thank you, Lord. Hey. Freedom is in the room today. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Like I said, if you got brunch, it might be late or you might want to leave.
na naše. Stay close on that. There's no telling where this will turn today. Um, just trying to remain sensitive to what the Lord wants to do today. Try my stay out the way. Y'all, y'all can hear me? That's one. Cool. <sighs> yeah, musicians just stay close. You can bring it down just a little bit, but just stay close with me. We're just going to try to flow and um, continue to, to stay in this vein. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anything can happen today. Anything can happen today. You guys are currently in a series right now called Versus, and I think it's been powerful to see the transformation happening on a week-to-week basis um, as you guys explore um, comparing and contrasting the old covenant versus the new covenant, right? Um, you guys talked about prayer. I believe you've, ca- you've talked about what else? Giving? Giving? What was last week? Healing. Healing. And today, I don't think it's coincidental I'm going to be talking about forgiveness. I'm going to be talking about forgiveness. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. However you want to do this, Lord. However you want to do this. Father, you speak in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I was going to say, uh, if it's your first time here today, I just want to say, we good? If it's your first time here, is any, any first time guests? Any first time guests? Everybody family? Okay, cool. I don't have to apologize for, uh, for us flowing with the Lord. All right, awesome. My name is Pastor A. Um, actually, my name is Austin. People call me Pastor A. Um, I'm Pastor K. Glad to be here this morning with you guys. And um, I was going to say I didn't want to start off too heavy, but the Lord said, shut up. Um, because I, what I'm talking about today is going to kind of be a heavy topic because so many of us can battle with forgiveness because we battle with shame and condemnation. So therefore, we can't fully walk in the freedom that the Lord has promised us because we don't believe that we're truly forgiven. 
So I was going to say I, I didn't want to start off too heavy, but we're already here now. Um, but Nigeria, if I were to kind of try to make it a little light in here, there's a couple things that I would say that, uh, that make me happy. There's a couple things that make me happy. And maybe some of y'all can agree too. Um, there's nothing like, uh, and this is going to seem very random, but I just got a list. Just, so just, just, just walk with me as I lay a foundation. Like when I come home, my, my children running home to me and saying, you know, daddy, 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 it makes me happy, right? Um, I don't have kids, but you, you have a, a phone, you have an app. Anybody got the sneakers app? It's nothing like hitting on the sneakers app finally. And you finally get the pair, right? It makes you happy. Uh, see if there's uh, some other things. Uh, for me, it's nothing like uh, fresh chocolate chip cookies coming out the oven. You know, the glory to God is in the cookies. You know, um, nothing like laughing so hard that you, you cry tears. It's like one of those gut rich and laughs where you just like listen, and especially when it's not fun. It's not supposed to be funny, but then everybody says stop laughing. And you keep laughing. You know what I'm saying? Here's the last one that that, that makes me happy, and I think some of y'all can agree. It's nothing like getting paid on a Friday. And then you get a bonus and you didn't know you got that. It's nothing like that. Uh, some of y'all are like, how does this do anything with forgiveness? We'll get to that in a minute, okay? Um, but there's a quote that says happiness, like money can't make you happy. And, you know, okay, cool. But I do believe that if you have money, it can make some circumstances around you a little healthier so you can have happy moments. Amen? So for all the deep people, like, yeah, money can make you happy. All right, well, this is the thing about money. Money is a resource that provides resources for us. Somebody say food, travel. You know, if you, you can pray all you want, but when you get to the, the gas pump, you the gas to get you to point A to point B, correct? So food, gas, uh, you know, shelter, you know, utilities, rent. All these things are necessary when it comes to uh, being able to utilize money. Um, and I don't think money is a bad thing. Um, one thing that money allows us to do is, though, it allows us to eliminate debt. Anybody got debt in here? It's okay. <sighs> I know. We, we, we just got light. Now we're getting back heavy. Student loan debt? Stay away from it. All right. Um, credit card debt, car note debt. It's like, all right, this is enough. Um, but here's the debt that we don't talk about enough, and I want us to kind of explore this today is spiritual debt. Because here's the truth. You can have all the money in your account, and you can be as debt-free as you think you are, but if you have not accepted what God has done through the personhood of Jesus Christ, you still have an outstanding balance on your account not hearing what I'm saying. Let me give you Bible so you don't think I'm just coming up with stuff. Romans 5 verse 12. Again, I don't have a title for today. The title is whatever the Lord wants to do. Um, but the title that we're focusing on is forgiveness. Old covenant versus new. Romans 5 12 is when Adam's sin sin entered the world Adam's sin brought death so death spread to everyone for everyone's sin. So you know the story. Adam and Eve chilling in the garden having a good old time, grand. I mean, they, they naked, living their best life. And then all of a sudden, they make a decision to want to know more than God. Even though that they were already made in God's image and likeness, there was a, 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 an opportunity to see what's outside of what they already had. Outside of the boundaries and the, of, the, of the, the blessing that they had with communion in him. And then that brings sin into the world. But here's the thing that we don't tell you sometimes in church we don't give you the proper definition of sin, okay? So when we look at sin, there's two, there's two ways that we can look at sin. Again, I'm just laying down a foundation before we get even heavier. You have harmatia and harmateno. Everybody say harmatia? Harmateno. So harmatia is the noun, the nature, the, the noun. So it's a, it's a state of, of failing to hit the mark. So it's a state of failing to hit the mark. So when you look at this scripture, it should really read, when Adam sinned, a state We need to switch? Yeah, we good, come on. We good, we good. We all good. We 
We're good now. There we go. It's all good. Technology. But again, the scripture is when Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam sin brought death, so death spread to everyone for everyone sin. And again, I said, what it should really read is when Adam sinned, a state of failing to hit, a failing to hit the mark entered the world. So what does that look like when, when we were born into this world, when your mom and dad was listening to Marvin Gaye, and then all of a sudden you just pop up on the scene, all right? You come into this world failing to hit the mark. What that would look like is like you're shooting arrows trying to hit a mark, and no matter how many times you try, you would never hit the mark. So you came into this world trying to compete with a scoreboard, and you were already behind in the game. Does that make sense? So it doesn't matter how big of a house that you you grew up in. It doesn't matter if you came from the cul-de-sac. It, it, it doesn't matter if you came from the mud. It doesn't matter if your mom was a, 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 um, a Baptist, Pentecostal. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're a believer or not. It doesn't matter if your parents uh, had money or didn't. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican. We all came into this world in a state of failing to hit the mark. Everybody with me? And then you have harmataino, which is the verb, so it's the action of sinning. All right? So I'm, I'm going to break that down later, but again, Sin in has entered the world, and we all have a debt on our account that we must figure out how to pay because, again, if that debt has not been settled, then it must be punished. Hebrews 9.22 tells us that without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. Without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. Romans 6.23 tells us, for the wages of sin is what? But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So, again, the wages of Failing to hit the mark is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So in order to get those wages paid, there has to be some type of assistance that we need in order to pay off the account. So there has to be some type of card. There has to be some type of payment. You know, I got, I got a couple cards in here, so maybe we can find one that can get that, 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 that balance off of my account. Because if I don't, if I don't get the balance off of my account it must be settled some type of way. We see the scripture says that the wages of sin is death, so if it's not paid, then someone's going to have to die. Do you hear me? I'm trying to walk real slow in this because it's a heavy topic, but we're going to we're, we're get to the freedom in a minute. So, so, so there's a system under the old covenant. Let me break this down really quick. A covenant is a relationship between two partners. Everybody say two. Two partners who make binding promises to each other and work together to reach a common goal. So we got two partners trying to reach a common goal. The goal that we're talking about right now is you have a debt on your account. You seem like a nice guy, I like that hoodie. But no matter how nice you are, if you haven't accepted the payment, there's a debt on your account that needs to get rid of. So that's the common goal. We have to get the debt off of your account. We have to get the debt off your account. So. We're working together to reach a common goal, and they're often co accompanied by oaths, signs, and ceremonies. Covenants define obligations and commitments. Watch this. But they are different from a contract because they are relational and personal. Everybody with me? So, so under the old covenant, there is a, there's, a, there's a method of payment called the law. The law is the Torah, 613 commandments. This is God's ordinance. It's his, 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 his way of governing us. Um, God gave the, the, the law to Moses for the children of Israel so that way we could, so they, they could be his people. I'm going to try to break this down and make it as simple as possible. He wanted them to be his people and to keep them in, in right standing with him by controlling, in a sense of, rules and regulations on how they should live their lives. 613 commandments on how to guide them. 613 commandments on how to be holy, how to be just, how to be made in right standing with him. So the card, there was nothing wrong with the card. It was only, the only thing that was wrong with the, the system was the person trying to use it. Meaning, again, when you enter the world failing to hit the mark, no matter what card I have, I'm always going to swipe and miss. Everybody with me? So what does that look like, Pastor A? Well, if you, if you reach all 612 commandments but you miss one, then you've missed them all. So what we're seeing is, and we're going to break this down again, because with the law, there's a blessing if you fulfill it, and there's a curse if you don't. So what it looked like, okay, let's, 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 let's paint a picture. Uh, write this down. It's the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement. Everybody say the Day of Atonement. That word atonement literally means covering. It means covering. 
So the Day of Atonement, or better known, is, a, is another holiday called Yom Kippur. It's the highest day of the Jewish calendar. And what would happen is, in the Old Covenant, remember the old system, there was a high priest. Everybody say high priest. So what the high priest would do is just, here, you don't look at my card number, all right? So the high priest would be in the tabernacle. You have the, the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of holies. I don't have time to break that down. But what would happen is you would have a, a card, I mean a, a, a lamb that you would, or an animal that you would bring to the high priest, all right? So you bring that, bring that card to the high priest. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you for your card. All right. And what would happen is that this would be the act of paying. Sorry. I don't need to bite with my card. This would be the act of paying for the penalty of sin. But, and, and what it would look like is this was a form of reconciliation. All right. So atonement means covering. The problem is during this time, when you brought the lamb to the high priest, your sin would be covered, but it wouldn't be removed. Everybody with me? So it would be covered, but what? Not not removed. So what happens is, after that blood sacrifice was offered to the Lord, because without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission for sins, a goat was released into the wilderness to symbolically carry away the sins of the people, and that scapegoat was never to return. So they would, they would have this one day out of the year. The sins will be covered for the year. But the problem is, remember, we were born into the world because of what Adam did in a constant state of missing the mark. So my sins may be covered for a year, but I'm going to do something again because I'm constantly. So it doesn't mean that the system was wrong. It just means the ones that were using it, there was a user error. Everybody with me? So again, your sin was covered, but it couldn't be removed. Let me give you more Bible, not my opinion. Hebrews 10, 1 through 4. Write these scriptures down. Again, this is probably not the day not to take notes. Because this is going to help you understand the freedom that you have in forgiveness. But I got to lay down this foundation. Hebrews 10, 1 through 4 says, the old system under the law. So that old system that I was talking about under the law, the, the 613 commandments. Under the law, Moses was only a shadow, a dim preview of good things to come, not the good things themselves. So again, right now, this is perfect. You can see my shadow, right? But if you stare at my shadow, you're missing the real thing. If you're constantly looking at the shadow on that wall over there, staring at the shadow, you can never truly understand what the shadow represents by just staring at the shadow. So what the scripture says is, it says it was only a shadow, a dim preview of good things to come, not the good things themselves. The sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year. Card. Card animal. Can you imagine us have to get animals now? That's the guy. Listen, I ain't going out there. Animal. Every single year, we're doing this. And the truth is, it might have been a different high priest because if the priest wasn't right, the priest would drop dead. That's a lot of pressure. Somebody said that's a lot of pressure. So again, the sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year, but they were never, listen to the language. I'm not making this up. Hebrews 10, 1 through 4, New Living Translation says, they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. A lot of the text that we read today, we're just going to let the Bible speak for itself. It says, if they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped. For the worshipers would have been purified, listen to the language, once for all time. So if this system would have worked, then there would be no need for Jesus. I'm a little ahead of my notes. So God gives us a system to show us that he was good, that the law was good, it was just, it was right. It's just that we were constantly missed the mark, so we messed it up ourselves. Everybody with me? All right. It says, so the worshipers would have been purified once for all time, and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year. Watch this last verse, verse 4. It says, for it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. So if it's not possible back then, I have a question, Pastor Cain, and why is, it still, why is it still that we're trying to rely on bulls and goats today? I'm going to get you to say something to your neighbor. Some of y'all are not going to say it because y'all really, really churchy, y'all really religious. Um, some, the other ones will say it. I, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, enough with the bull. No, 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 no. T turn to the other neighbor. Now, y'all say, say it outside of church. 
Enough with the bull. Enough with the bull. Well, Pastor, hey, what does that really mean? Because, you know, I, 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 I hear that we're, we're forgiven, but, but, but sometimes I don't feel forgiven. Can I help you really quick? Forgiveness is not a feeling. It's a posture and a position. So, so again, we see that the blood of bulls and goats does not satisfy, but still today that we, we try to provide bulls today. What, what do bulls look like today? Well, bulls today may look like, um, well, you know, you know, what happened last night? I can't really say what happened last night. But maybe if I come to church this morning, here, here you go, God. <laughs> no? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, 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 I knew I wasn't supposed to go to that website, but um, maybe if I, if I listen to Christian music, that, 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 that'll satisfy. No? Okay, cool. I got to remember who I get my cards to. Um, um, uh, um, uh. Uh, maybe maybe if I if I use the gift that God gave me and hide behind my gift instead of resting in the giver, maybe maybe. <laughs> um, uh, well, I'm good at memorizing scriptures. Um, so 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 maybe me uh, presenting myself as this individual who has it all together. Um, I don't know what your bull is, but many of us are still relying on something. When Jesus says, "I'm already the one that you should be relying on." Somebody say enough with the bull. I need my cards back. All right, amen. Then we're really going to have a problem. So again, the system was a dim preview of the good things to come. And the good thing is not just a thing, it's a person. His name is Jesus Christ. So what does this look like? So we're, we're in the old covenant still because what you have to learn about covenants is they can't be established until blood is shed. So even when you see Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we're still under the old covenant, technically. I know it says New Testament, but we're still under the old covenant. Why? Because Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law. I became to fulfill it. So I gave you a breakdown of the system that we talked about. High priest, day of atonement, which was only something that covered your sins. It didn't what? It didn't remove it. So now I need someone who established the system to fulfill the system so the system is fulfilled so I can, work in, so I can live in freedom. Everybody with me? So we have the old covenant. Everybody, everybody, everybody good. Oftentimes when, when we hear about forgiveness, I'll just speak for myself as a PK. One of the first things you would hear is repent, repent, repent. Turn or burn. You don't, you, you don't turn, 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 listen, turn or burn. If you, if you don't turn, you're going to burn. The, the problem is, Pastor C, is we told people to turn without changing their minds. So, so, so let's, let's make this really practical because y'all looking at me real, real, I don't, I don't know if y'all still like, you know, still caught up from, from worship. But, but what we would tell our youth is, don't have sex. So we said, run! Sex is bad, even though it was created by God. No? Okay. I, I, I was going to make sure I had my church. So we say, turn from sex because it's bad. But we don't tell them why they should turn. Or we don't tell them how to change their minds towards sex. That it's a blessing that God has given us. But when you go outside the blessing and outside the boundary of it, it becomes a burden. Maybe we had that conversation or people had that conversation with us when we were younger. Instead of just trying to threaten us with hell, but teaching us truth, we wouldn't try to go find out ourselves. Just me? Okay, cool, cool, cool. We tell people to turn away from weed. But we don't tell them why, so when I have a moment of stress and I haven't changed my mind, I'll turn from it momentarily until I get stressed enough and I go back to my old default. So now I find myself feeling like I heard I was forgiven, but now I find myself in this cycle. So am I really forgiven? Because it seems like I'm not. I said the prayer, but now I feel like I'm stuck. So, so, so again, we, 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 we see in the scriptures, John the Baptist says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. What he's saying is, I need you to turn your mind. Why? Because repentance is not restitution. Restitution is a payment. So what we've taught people is that repentance is restitution. If you repent, then that's your payment for the sin. It's not. Is this too, is this too much? Is this too teaching? Or do we want to be ignorant? Because this is what teaching does. Teaching brings us out of darkness into the light so that way we're, not longer, we're no longer bound. So, so, so repentance is not restitution. Restitution is simply a payment. 
So repentance is also not an apology. Repent, repent, repent. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. I won't do it. I won't do it again. Next week later. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. The same day. Because if I haven't changed my mind, metaneo, I'm going to go back to the very thing that I keep saying I, I don't want to do. So again, repentance is not restitution. Repentance is not an apology. Repentance is an exchange. It's an exchange of thoughts to say, hey, Lord, my way of thinking is not the way, but your way is better. So as you help me to change my thoughts, now I'll change my direction. Everybody with me? Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word renew means to, to literally renovate. And when anything is renovated, it means you have to tear it from the top, or from the top down and build it back up. So that's telling me with this whole analogy that I'm giving you, we have a system that was established, but for some reason it's not working because we are constantly, what? Missing the mark. So now the system has to be reconstructed in a way that brings freedom for what we need. Again, under the old, under the old covenant, it's about what we give. Under the new covenant, it's about what God gave. John 3.16 is the t-shirt scripture. We all know it. Vacation Bible School. Come on, say it with me. We're going to say in King James Version too. That's the only version you can say it in. For God, come on, read. So love the world. Uh-huh. Come on. Begotten. Don't forget that part. And, 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 who, and, and whomsoever, believe it in him. Shall, got to say the shall. Shall not perish, but what? Everlasting life. Now give God glory. Give God glory. Give God glory. All right, cool. What's verse 17 say? We know 16, but we haven't, we, we, we never learned 17. 17 says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So we, 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 we only know the part where he gave, but we don't know why he was given. So if I give you a gift, but you don't appreciate the gift, you live below your means because you didn't understand the privileges that you had. It's nothing like having a contract that you signed, but you don't know the terms of the agreement. You got money in your account, but you but you walking around like you broke because you didn't you didn't read the clause. I'll keep going. Jesus says like this in Matthew five seventeen. He said, "I didn't come to abolish the law, but I came to fulfill it." And this is how he fulfills it under this new system. Hebrews nine eleven, verse fifteen. It says, Christ is the perfect sacrifice. That's the subtitle. I'm going to read it really quick for us, all right? It says, so Christ has now become the high priest. We talked about, I had to do all this work. When you teach, you just have to lay a foundation. We talked about the high priest, remember? We get the cards. Don't forget my cards now. We gave him the lamb. The high priest brings the sacrifice. But that system doesn't work. So now under the new system, it says, Christ is the perfect sacrifice. So Christ has now become the high priest over all the good things that have come. He has entered the greater, more perfect tabernacle in heaven, which was not made by human hands and is not part of this created world. Verse 12, here's the power. In the old, it was with the animal's blood. Verse 12 says, with his own blood, not the blood of, of goats and calves, he entered the most holy place. Watch this, listen to the language, once for all time. Everybody say once for all time. And secured our redemption forever. Forever in Greek means what? Forever. Forever in Hebrew means what? Forever in Spanish means what? Forever in English means what? Forever means forever. So that tells me when Jesus provided a sacrifice that, re that secured our redemption forever, it wasn't just for our past sins. It wasn't just for our present sins. It was also for our future sins as well. You don't believe that. It says, under the old system, the blood, the bull, the blood of, of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer could cleanse people's bodies from ceremonial impurity. Verse 14, just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our conscience from sinful deeds so that, we, so that way we can worship the living God. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. That is why he is the one who mediates a new covenant between God and people so that all who are called can receive the eternal inheritance God has promised them. For Christ died to set them free from the penalty of sins they had committed under that first covenant. Does that make sense? Go, to, go with me to Hebrews 10, 11 through 18, and then we're about to be out your way. 
I'm trying to lay the foundation. What I've done is lay the foundation of how the old system worked, but how under the new, we, we have a better, a better covenant through Jesus. Verse 11 says, under the old covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. Verse 12, but somebody say, but. But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice, good for all time. Good for all time. Good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. There he waits until his enemies are humbled and made a footstool under his feet. For by that one offering, he forever made perfect those who are being made holy. And the Holy Spirit also testifies that this is so. For he says, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day. This is the new agreement. This is the new terms of the contract that we're talking about. With my people on that day, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts. And I will write them on their minds. Then he says, listen to the language, here comes the power. I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. Some of the things that we're still bound by and, 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 and got us uh, tangled up, God's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. I'm going to give you one more scripture, and I'm going to give you an example, and then we're going to go home after this. John 19, verse 30, Jesus is on the cross. We're going to be talking about that maybe next week. I don't know what Pastor Canaan's sermon is. But on the cross in John 19, verse 30, one of the last statements of Jesus says, it is finished. That word finished means teleo, which literally means complete, execute, Conclude, accomplish, make an end, expire, finish, perform, pay. Here's my favorite part, what what finish means. It means to discharge a debt. So again, a covenant is established once blood is shed. The new covenant is established because of the blood of Jesus. And now the, 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 the account that we have coming into this world can now be settled because of his blood. Everybody stand with me. I want to give you an example, and this is how we're going to end the, end the, end the, end the conversation. Let me get, um, let me see how we can do this. Let me get a couple people real quick. Yeah, I'll take you four right here. Yeah, y'all come up here. Y'all stand, just stand in front of me. In the line. Yeah, right. In, face, yeah, yeah. Come up to me. There you go. Cool, cool, cool. All right, you're going to be my judge. Everybody say judge. judge. Defendant. Uh, plaintiff. Accuser. All right, cool. And I need one more. Uh, Taylor, or Jess, you got my cards. Sorry. Uh, you stay right there. You're going to be my advocate. Everybody say advocate. Say so all this to try to give you an example of what's, of what's happening, all right? We, we would set it up like a courtroom if we had time. We don't. Uh, just, just use your imagination. Y'all, y'all watch Judge Judy? Judge? Okay, cool. So you, you already know what, it, what a courtroom looks like. You have a judge. The judge declares the sentence. Whatever the judge says goes because of their authority. Doesn't matter what the evidence says, the judge has the final say so. Everybody with me? You have the defendant, an individual or company who's being sued or accused in the court of law. You have a record that's been put against your name, that's been brought up by the plaintiff or the accuser. The accuser or the plaintiff brings a case to the judge in the court of law. Revelation tells us in uh, Revelation 12, 10, the accuser of the brother is known as Satan. He's the adversary. Everybody with me? So we got the judge, we got the plaintiff, we got the accuser. So what does this look like? Every day, the accuser is coming to say, look what Austin did. Look what Kim did. Look what Canaan did. Look what Gary did. Look what Amore did. Day and night, the accuser comes to remind us of what we've done. And some of us in the room believe that because you think that what you did is who you are. So now, I thought I was saved, but I don't feel saved because I keep being reminded of what I did. So you have an accuser that's reminding you of what you did that brings us to a place of condemnation. Condemnation says what you did is who you are. Conviction reminds you that, hey, that's not who you are, so you don't have to do what you did. Everybody with me? But somebody say, thank God for for an advocate. So you got the judge, 
the defender, the plaintiff, the accuser, and then you have the advocate. The advocate is someone who pleads your case on your behalf, almost like a lawyer. So what this would look like, and let me just give you scripture. 1 John 2, 1 says, my dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. So you come up here. You be the judge with me. Stand right here. Face right here. You come right here. And then you guys will just kind of be the, uh, the, the accuser and the, and the plaintiff, okay? So what's looking like is you have a sentence on your account. It ain't looking too good for you, my boy. The odds are stacked up. You use all the cards. You use all the bulls. You don't got one left in the day. No draw fours, no nothing. See you on, this, on, the, on, the, on the other side, all right? But what happens is we have an advocate that now says, hey, not only am I going to stand on their behalf, I want you to go over there. I'm going to stand in their place. Jesus not only pleads the case for you, he pleads it as you. This is what forgiveness looks like. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, he made Christ who knew no sin to judicially be sin on our behalf. So that in him we would become the righteousness of God, that is, we would be made acceptable to him, placed in right relationship with him by his gracious love and kindness. So not only did Jesus take our place, he also stands as the, as the very sin that, that put the charge on our account. So where did that be lust? Where did that be unforgiveness? Where did that be uh, stealing? Where did that be murder? Whatever the sin is, Jesus not only stood in our place, but he became that sin. He who knew no sin became sin so that way we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Everybody with me? So the intercessor, the advocate, stands in between the judge and the defendant, and based on how well the intercessor presents the case, the defendant can go free even if he's guilty. Here's the terms of law. The judge just has to see you as just. What does just mean? Right standing, right position. So now a better, a better way to do this, we, you turn right here, you stand behind the advocate. So anytime that you come before the Lord, this is what it looks like when he sees you. He doesn't see you. He sees his son. So I appreciate that golf clap because you don't, you don't believe it. Because you don't see yourself the way that God sees you. Because you're trying to see it through, through your own eyes instead of seeing it through his. So what's the proof, Pastor A? The proof is in the payment. Again, Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. But watch this, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. There's a term in court, too, called double jeopardy. Double jeopardy says that the U.S. Constitution prohibits anyone from being prosecuted twice substantially for the same crime. So when I told you earlier, well, it feels like I'm, I'm not saved because I keep doing the same thing over and over again. It's already been covered. So what does that mean? You have the right to remain silent. Well, don't I have to speak? Don't, doesn't somebody have to speak for me? No, 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 no. Because when I see the blood, I'll pass over. The proof is in the payment of what Jesus did for us. What's the payment? Colossians 2, verse 13 through 14. Listen to the language. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing to the cross. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Second Corinthians tells us, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Listen to the language. If any man be in Christ, it's the position that I have in him. Salvation is not a feeling, it's a position that I have. So now I'm in, I'm in him, in him I live, I move, I have my very being. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old has passed away, behold, all things are new. This is what forgiveness looks like in the new. You guys can go away. But here's the truth, and then we'll, 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 we'll close, and I'll give it to whoever's closing me out. Now that you have an understanding of what forgiveness looks like, how do you now, before you give it to anyone else, how do you give it to yourself? The Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and soul, your strength. 
love your neighbor as you love yourself. The problem is we, we often don't time give love because we first don't love ourselves. How can you forgive someone if you haven't first forgiven and receiving forgiveness from the Lord, but then also receiving forgiveness for yourself? So if, I, if we were to paint this picture over again, there are people that we're trying to put on the seat to say, no, 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 they're guilty, they're guilty, because you don't know what they did to me, God. You don't know what they did to me. Yeah, but he stood in their place too. I lost all my amens. Because it's not enough to have a revelation that we now know about forgiveness if we don't take the responsibility and, and, and give that same forgiveness to other people. I don't have time to talk about that fully, but again, now once you have revelation, you now have responsibility to forgive your boss that you don't like at work on Monday. To forgive your parents that you have a serious relationship with and you don't really want to talk to your mom because y'all, y'all fell out at Thanksgiving last year and you, you, you still ain't feeling. To forgive your brother who you actually think is the favorite child uh, secretly but, 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 and you're kind of jealous of him, but you just never had a conversation about what happened when you left for college. Forgiveness doesn't just work this way. It has to work this way as well. And that's the beauty of the gospel. Can we pray? Dear Lord, I, I want to pray for people today who, uh, for two people, uh, two types of people. Um, first, for those who have never received this forgiveness, this free gift that you give us through your son, Jesus. Um, if there's anyone in the room right now, we've, we've, we've kind of done a crash course today on what forgiveness looks like in the old versus the new. We understand that in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, um, the system itself wasn't flawed. It was just us. Um, so God makes a better system through him to provide us freedom that's found through um, accepting what he's done for us through the cross and through the resurrection. Excuse me. But here's the issue, again, as I stated earlier. If you have not accepted um, his forgiveness, there is an outstanding balance on your account. And I don't want to take for granted that if people are in here just because they come to church doesn't mean that you have accepted the payment. If there's anyone under the sound of my voice that, that, that wants to accept what Jesus did for you through the finished work, um, and that's through relationship with him today, um, now that you have a better understanding of what forgiveness actually looks like, and you, and you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, would you just raise your hand if there's anyone in here? Anyone in here? Anyone in here? It's a free gift. Nothing that you have to work for. It's not based upon your goodness. It's not based upon your performance. It's a gift that all you have to do is just receive. Is there anyone who wants the free gift of salvation in here today? Anyone? The second group of people that we want to pray for really quick is those who have already accepted the free gift but struggle with with resting in the gift of salvation, resting with forgiveness, truly believing that even on your worst day, you're still forgiven. And even on your best day, you still fall short. If there's anyone who struggles with shame, guilt, and condemnation, especially in this season right now, by a show of hands, uh, just raise your hand really quick, and we just want to pray for you. Amen. We'll pray for you. Pray for you. Lord, we thank you for your word. In Romans 8, 1, it says, therefore now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Therefore now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Condemnation is a damnatory system that hangs over our head that tells us what we did is who we are. But Father, right now, we speak loud and clear to the the spirit of condemnation, shame, and guilt and remind the enemy that he has no place here. Father, your word says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. So we thank you for the freedom that we have in Jesus. We thank you for the freedom that was provided on Calvary. We thank you for the freedom that was established through your covenant made by your blood and your sacrifice. We thank you for the promise of life that we have because of you living and and coming back to life in the resurrection. Father, we thank you for the truth that is who you are. You are the way, you are the truth, you are the life. So right now, we cancel out any lies in our minds that says that what we did is who we are. That we feel like we find ourselves in a cycle, Lord, that's not who we are. And we thank you that you still meet us in that place as well. 
Help us to change our minds. Help us to have a, 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 a repentance. Help us to have a shift to, to see ourselves better, to see ourselves the way that you see us, to exchange our thoughts for yours right now in the name of Jesus. And any obstacles, anything that limits our understanding, anything that, that says, uh, no, no, this is who you are, this is what you've done, Lord, we cancel the lie of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your children that we walk in the freedom that we have in you. We walk in the access that you have given us. We walk in the freedom of friendship. We walk in the joy of our salvation right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your forgiveness, God. We accept and we receive the forgiveness that you have given us, so we give it to ourselves as well, and that way we can give it to other people. Remind us this week, Lord, that we are fully forgiven because of what you did, not because of what we've done, but because of who you are. It's in Jesus' name we pray and believe. All those who agree, say amen, amen, and amen.